misconception that more camber equals more lateral grip. But dive into the technicality of this and you'll find that this statement is only a fraction of the story. It's like saying a bigger engine needs more fuel than a smaller engine. Sure, a bigger engine might use more fuel, but what's important is the air-fuel ratio. You can have a big engine run on a leaner mixture than a small engine, like this stupid-ass rotary. For an ideal amount of grip, you want the tire flat with the road. This means you have the most contact patch available for cornering. A well-designed suspension is meant to camber out as it compresses, which means as the car corners, the wheel gains camber at the same rate it rolls, keeping the tire flat. And this all applies during peak cornering. Lowering your car on aftermarket suspension messes this whole geometry up. Most of the time, lowering your car puts your wheel at a very aggressive angle. So you have to bring it back to almost square to keep that contact patch flat. That's why adding more camber to a car that's already low doesn't work, because you're just making that angle even worse. The challenge now is just finding that balance. Drive aggressively and watch how your tire wears. If there's too much inside wear, you gotta bring the tire back in. If there's too much outside wear, you need to add some more camber. And that's the main misconception on camber. Everyone thinks having your wheel out like this increases grip. When in reality, you want as much tire and as much rubber as you can get. On an FC RX-7, you can go online and get something like this. Hell no! But since you are an FC owner, it means you're poor by default. So what you could do instead is go on Amazon and buy yourself some of these. These are male and female heim joint rod ends. And the nice thing about this is you can screw these in together, in and out, to give yourself some adjustability. The only thing you do have to do is cut about a quarter of an inch off this one and a quarter of an inch off that one. Just these sit a little bit closer together. OSHA approved. My link is about two inches, center to center, but since your ride height is most likely going to be different from mine, you're going to have to do some trial and error and figure out your own. Installation is also fairly simple. Just jack the car up, unbolt the two bolts holding the trailing arm and the subframe, take your old camber link out, slide your new one in, and tighten everything else back up. You do want to make sure you get some washers, just so there's no space for them to wiggle around. It's just a little bit square, but looks pretty good to me. Do you want to add the disclaimer to do this at your own risk? Don't cut too much material off the links. Make sure you use a quality heim joint that's thick enough and strong enough. And just like that, you've corrected your car's rear camber, saving you from horrible camber wear and giving your car some more lateral grip. All for $25.